Having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield too, each one of us by your constant protection so that supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Welcome to you all, and a special welcome to those joining us via the live stream. Today the Church celebrates the fourth Sunday of Lent, also known as Letare Sunday. It's a Latin word, literally meaning rejoice. And we rejoice today because we are halfway to Easter from the start of Lent. We rejoice because this is a beautiful day but above all, we rejoice because we are loved by the Lord and we gather in his love this morning. Because the Lord loves us, he never tires of offering us his forgiveness. And so we acknowledge our sinfulness now as we seek his mercy.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chalizids and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's no place like home. Home is where everything is settled. Home is the place where we are surrounded by people who know us, accept us, and love us. Home is the place of stability and security. Many people do not have this experience of home. And sometimes, many people are forced from their home to live in a strange land. This is known as the experience of exile. 
exile is an experience of disorientation, instability, and confusion. And this is the story of the people of God. This is the story of Israel. The story recorded in the first reading today by the chronicler who narrates the history of his people. The story of Israel, again, started with a covenant between God and Abraham. God promises Abraham a great family and a new land in which to live with his family. God makes good on his promises. God provides Abraham a great family which becomes a great nation. And God leads this nation from slavery in Egypt into a promised land, a land where they can live God's ways. And here in this land, they build a temple. The residents of God here on earth, the hot spot of his presence among us. And they can remain in this land under one condition, that they remain faithful to their covenant with God, who is always faithful to them. And so begins the first reading, in which the chronicler, chronicler tells of infidelity after infidelity. Again and again, the people of Israel turn away from God, turn away from their special covenant relationship with him. They sin, principally by worshiping false gods. They corrupt the house of God. And God sends prophets to speak the truth, to remind his people to turn back to him, to return to the covenant. And finally, the worst event in the history of the people of Israel occurs, exile. A foreign invader, Babylon, comes to Jerusalem, the capital, destroys the city, and levels the temple. And then the people are forced into exile in Babylon. And as we hear in the psalm there, by the rivers of Babylon, the people wept as they remembered their homeland. They remembered Jerusalem. Eventually, another foreign invader, Persia, conquers Babylon. And King Cyrus of Persia is clever enough to send the people of Israel to their homeland once again. And in fact, he assists them in rebuilding the temple. And yet, and yet something is still off. Even though the people are no longer in physical exile, they remain in a spiritual exile. They are as corrupt as their ancestors before them. They are as unfaithful as their descendants. They too do not hold up their end of the covenant. And it is precisely into this situation that the Father sends his son Jesus. God so loves his people Israel that he sends his only son Jesus, the child of Israel, to rescue his people 
from their ongoing spiritual exile. Jesus comes to gather the scattered people. Jesus comes to rebuild the temple, his own body. He is the presence of God. Jesus comes to offer once and for all the forgiveness of sins, which is the source of spiritual exile. This story of exile is not unique to Israel. In fact, this is our story too. This last year has been an exile of sorts. We were forced from our normal way of life into a different sort of reality. Things are out of sorts. This has been a time of instability, insecurity, disorientation, the very experience of exile. But even in normal times, we experience this same reality. We live in this world, and yet we know something is off. This is our homeland, but so often it does not feel like home. When we see instances of injustice, for example, we know this is not the way things are meant to be. When we experience loss, we feel unstable. And of course, when we sin, we too contribute to making our homeland less of a home for ourselves and for everyone else. And to us too, the Father sends his son in love for us. Jesus comes to rescue us from our spiritual exile. During this time of Lent, we hear the word of God again and again calling us to return home, to return to the Lord who is our home. We live as strangers in a foreign land, here and now, because we do not live according to the values of this world. And our task as Catholic Christians is to make our homeland feel like home for everyone by living the values of Jesus and his kingdom. Which is why we pray and fast and engage in works of mercy this Lent. We pray for the restoration, not only of our country, but this world. That's the story of the Bible. The world was perfectly in harmony. God and humanity were one. And by our sin, we were exiled from God. But God chases after us to bring us back to him and to restore the harmony of his creation. And God is choosing us, calling us, to help him in this restoration project. And so we pray for his kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. We fast, showing our commitment for this to come to pass. We fast to stand in solidarity with those who are exiled from a situation of life to the full. And of course, we work for the kingdom. We work for the kingdom of heaven here on earth by showing mercy by showing charity to those in need. 
not only a recipe for Lent, this is a recipe for restoration, a recipe for rescue from exile. God so loves us. God so loves you, so loves me. He sent his son Jesus to save us, to save us precisely from exile. And Jesus calls us to join him in this rescue operation and to make this homeland feel more like home. As a, f as a family of faith, we now profess our faith as we pray. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with confidence in the goodness of our God, we bring before him now the needs of the church and the world. Our response will be, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> For our church, that this holy season of Lent be a time of renewal and appreciation for things of real and lasting value. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our world, that there will be a just and equitable, di equitable distribution of the coronavirus vaccines so that those who are most vulnerable may be vaccinated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our RCIA members who are preparing for reception into the church, that they will feel the joy of this community as they near their initiation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for the grace of transformation, that God will lead us from the comfort of darkness and selfishness and enable us to live in freedom as children of the light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold in our hearts, that God will place them in the light of his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, that they may rest in the arms of our loving Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to us in love to save us. We humbly ask you to hear our prayers this day and to grant them in accordance with your will. We pray this in all things through Christ our Lord. And as always, thank you for your ongoing generosity to your family of faith here at Our Lady of Grace. And we pray that the Lord will bless you in abundance for blessing the needs of this church and the needs of the poor.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake was handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands and confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth 
in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Longing for the coming of the kingdom in its fullness, when God will fully restore his creation, we now pray the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
out to you in your cars.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. A few announcements. First announcement, of course, is to remind you of the daylight savings time, but you all came here on time, so you knew. So in celebration of the year of St. Joseph, we invite you to join us as we honor St. Joseph in a triduum of masses from March 17th through March 19th at 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we will conclude on the feast day of St. Joseph, which is March 19th, with a special tradition of the blessing of St. Joseph's table. Please join us. And because of the feast day of St. Joseph, there will be no stations of the cross in the, on the evening of Friday, March 19th. Our Holy Week schedule is out. We are adding a 6.30 a.m. Mass in English on, uh, pardon me, and a 12.30 p.m. Mass in Spanish on both Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday in addition to our regular Mass times. So if you want to be here really early on Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday, you can be here at 6.30. Please check the website and bulletin for more detailed schedule. Please keep in your prayers all of our school and religious education first communicants that will have their first confessions on Saturday, March 20th. Operation Rice Bowl, uh, please join us in giving alms this Lent to Catholic Relief Services through this project. Materials are available after all the Masses. Our Lady of Grace, along with other local parishes here in the San Fernando Valley, will peacefully pray and witness during these 40 days of Lent outside of an abortion provider in Mission Hills. Of course, we will pray for the women considering abortion and, of course, for an end to abortion. And we encourage you to participate. Check out the details in the bulletin and on the website. And lastly, thank you so much for your presence and your prayer here this morning. And we go forth from here to work with the Lord to restore things as they should and to make this homeland a home for everyone. God bless you this week and enjoy your Sunday. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Your reading was fantastic. Hey, Barb.